Without further ado, welcome to the Hills to Jesus Hour as we have uh, instructed previously. Now, the way that this goes is we're going to be breaking this down, this show down now, in the three categories, all right? We got our scallywag tales, mm. okay? Got our scallywag tales for y'all, and that's just going to be the topic of discussion that we're talking about from some story that we've heard, seen, and some y'all might have heard on the internet. Next is going to be shooting your shot. Love advice, from the the perspective of two men who I don't know what we are on on the spectrum of how you women see us, but I leveled it to cute, <laughs> handsome, and fine as fuck. And I've already said what Lou at. Lou is sitting at handsome, and I'm sitting at cute. But we'll discuss that a little earlier for those, a little later, excuse me, for those bad and bougie. You bad and bougie, nigga. You, you, nah, you nigga. Your emblem come out your car like a spotlight when you open your door. You bad Stop. and bougie. Stop. You are bad and bougie. But yes, and then of course we ended off with you've got questions, we've got answers. So we open it up to the audience to ask questions and we try to knock out a few and answer a few. So come with them, no different than usual. Glad everyone is here. And so we're going to go ahead and start off this thing. And get this shit popping. All right. So, first thing of the evening is the scallywag tales. And the scallywag tales has to do with breakups. Okay. Uh, first off, Lou, have you ever broken up with somebody? I have broken up with somebody. It's been a while, but yeah, I've broken up with somebody before. Okay. Now, when you broke up with that person, did you do it like a decent human being or was you wasn't shit and just, you know, ended it very bad built, you know, bridge burning down style? Uh, man, I, I mean, shit, I, I felt like it was good. Shit. Uh, I, I mean, I called her on the phone mm -hmm. and, you know, told her what I was feeling, told her I ain't think, you know, this was the best situation to be in anymore. And she, I mean, she and I been cool since then, and we cool to this day. So I guess okay. it was good. Okay, so y'all still cool to this day, then? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, you know, I too have had the uh, the, the breakup. Um, I, I definitely believe in not burning any bridges. So I try to make sure it's like either either you try not to burn the bridge, or you take the more of the blame in this going out, depending on how they choose to take it. And also shout out to King uh, Kid The Wiz for the 100 bits. Um, as y'all can see here, we are live on Twitch as well with these. So you'll see a lot of the stuff pop up as well as like some of our sub goals for the channel, as well as like the road to our uh, subscribers on there. So make sure you're following me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Will Farrell, and also following uh, Lewis G at his Instagram at Lou G83. That way you can stay up to date with all of his uh update stand up tour dates that he's gonna be coming out with. So you wanna always keep up to date with that. But yeah, uh I have would take I like I said, if it come into a breakup, depending on how she would take it, like unless she wanted to be like kind of bitter about it or something like that, I would still take more of the initial bump. Be like, you know, like you know, it's you know, it don't feel right. It's kind of me though and stuff. So then that way we good. And I ain't got to worry about no bad karma or something like that. Or somebody sitting here just feeling some type of way. Like, I can't believe this motherfucker. <laughs> I can't believe you it. out there that be like that. Job. Yeah. Man, yeah, this dirty bastard. I, I know there's a woman out there right now that shot me down, that see all this stuff. And I'm like, should have rolled his face when I had the chance. I, and you know what? And I hope that that statement is true. And I hope they just be so upset with themselves. I hope they melt into a fucking little ball every time that they see you doing all the amazing shit that you do. Should let me hit. I'm just saying, should let me hit. Yeah, should you should. Shit, they should still let you hit. They should. should. Let, nah, because I don't, cause I don't want to hit now. That's not. Nah. No, I don't want to hear. Now I want a partner. Now I want somebody like I'm building now. I need somebody to walk this path with me. I don't, don't want to hit now. I well, got too much. It's too much work now to hit. You know what I'm saying? If somebody see me doing great and they was like, hey, I ain't let you hit then, but I'm going to let you now. I'm going to do it. Hey, man, as you, hey, Luke, as you should. <laughs> because your phone shouldn't be dry. I mean, it is, but it shouldn't be. Right. I'm going to just be like, you didn't know no better. 
I'm gonna still say they didn't know no better, but it's a, it, it's a lot. Cause you here's the thing I be I be remembering it's like I'm awesome, and I state that in the case of being awesome that when I fuck you ain't gonna leave. Not just not just based off of the fucking part, but just because I'm like yo I'm awesome, like I'm great to talk to, I'm cool to hang out with, I got weed. Like why would you not want to stay? Like I'm not no dirty ass dude either. Like yo you like you've been to my house. Like I'm very upkeep with my stuff. You know I try to make sure my place is comfortable for myself. It's like yo like there's too many elements there for a woman to not want to leave. And even by your space, like there's enough elements like where you live. You know not gonna get no details and nothing out like that. But right. it's it's a, a spot comfortable for a woman to go. I, I I'll sleep in until about nine here. I'm comfortable. It's good. <laughs> Facts. I don't want to immediately get out of here and run to my house to shower. Like he it smells. It don't smell like feet in here. His bed ain't on the ground and stuff like that. He actually got a couch. He got right. cups to put water and juice. He got juice. I got right. I have juice. He got, just juice. he got real water, not tap water and stuff like that. He got, got real kombucha. water. I got kombucha over here, so you can get a, you can get your little gut health right. See, see, I I gotta be selective with. I can't just be knocking any scallywag down like that. Nah, as you shouldn't be, because scallywag shouldn't be drinking all your kombucha or your premium bre- beverages in the first place. Well, here's the thing, man. You always got to have one or two scallywags in your life. Okay, you got you got yeah. to have. It's, it's just like it's just like pirates. You got to have at least one or two in your pocket. You're right. You got to. Because then they keep you up to date. They keep you up on game. So then that way you are also not put on the list for the scallywags. Because I've noticed that too. Like, shout out to my scallywag homegirls. Because they'll let me know immediately. Be like, hey, hey, her? Mm-mm. 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 She, 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 I already, we know what she about. Trust me, now. Nah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, it's always, yeah, it's always good to have somebody that can watch your back, keep you on game, like you said. So, okay, no, nah, you're right. Yeah, always, always. <laughs> yeah, but you know, but to, but to date them and stuff like that, because again, like we, we know Scallywag home, we know Scallywag girls, we got a couple of them and stuff like that, and we don't judge them because you know they. They need to be in the ecosystem. That's the balance. For every fuck boy, you gotta have a scallywag. That's true. I judge a little bit, but I don't. I don't judge a hundred percent, but I judge a, just a snitching. I don't. I don't judge because if I take the worst thing a scallywag does and then compare it to the worst thing a fuck boy can do, it's like there's really no comparison. And so that's why I'm like, I can't, I can't judge you for what you do as long as you, if you honest with it. Now, if you not an honest scallywag, that's a problem. But we don't hang around non-honest scallywags. Just like we don't hang around non-honest fuckboys. We got some fuckboys we know, but they are initial fuckboys. They'll let you know, hey, I ain't shit. You knew I wasn't shit when you, when you met me. You knew I wasn't shit in the middle of it when you tried to figure if you was going to stay with me. And guess what? I still ain't shit now that you're ready to leave and to figure out you don't want to fuck with me no more. And that's facts. That's real. And it's like, uh, well, it seems like he gave you every answer to step on the way. So what you got? It's on you now. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, we were, but the topic was talking about breakups. And so... um. I think it's funny, bro, that, like, people don't know how to break up. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, yeah, like you just mean by the fact, because, like, people are, like, break up via text or, like, be, like, real cowardly with it or what you, yeah. what you mean? Yeah, well, I think, like, like you know, as far as, like, our, like our scallywags, like I told you a long time ago, like, one of the tales we have for the scallywags is... Uh, a fuck boy that I know um, actually broke up with his girlfriend on Facebook via her wall. He wrote on her wall that it was over, um, and 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 filled it with instructions on like the time limit of how it would be up before he blocks her there on Facebook to where she can't respond and everything because he didn't know when she was gonna see it and stuff like that. And so you got to like end of day. Before I block you, but I'm letting you know like it's over. And this is something like yo, her family follows her Facebook. Her aunties and her cousins saw that before she did. Uh, how long were they together? Two years. 
I assume for a nigga to do all of that, that she must have did something that really like pissed him the fuck off. Yo, and so that's what I wanted to know. That's what I wanted to know. What did she do to get an EOD memo of a breakup? <laughs> EOD. Like she did something. She she was either fucking with one of his homies or she just did something real foul for a nigga to be like, you know what? I'm telling Facebook like that. Facebook, bro. <laughs> Facebook. You told Facebook. <laughs> And then blocked her. So no, and then blocked all her family members. So could none of them go in his DMs and get at him for what he did or anything like that. And I was just like, yo, no judgment, no judgment. You know what I'm saying? Let he who's in without sin cast the first stone. And that's why I live in a glass house. Yeah, it's. I mean, I don't. I don't know the entire story. Obviously, I just know what you know. Yeah, and what you share. But I'm I'm gonna blame it on her, even though he did it, even though he broke up with her in not the most favorable way. I'm gonna still blame it on her, cause I cause she did something to get that type of reaction. But you know, I guess my question is though, like, how do like like what is a a a proper way to break up with somebody? And let's and let's skip all the like of, right. of trying to say we gonna be honest. And right. stuff like that of like, yo, like, oh, we can sit down and have a conversation. Like, let's, we have to be honest with ourselves. In our today's society and stuff like that, it is very rare that you will have two people be on the same page when it comes to a breakup, feelings-wise. Like, even as we see today, like, nobody really breaks up until after three to six months. So it's like, if there's this chick, like for all them fellas that follow these chicks online, that you be waiting to see break up, that then stop posting a nigga on there. Um, they ain't no longer showing dudes on their Instagram and shit when they post and stuff like that. And now they talking about, yo, living my best life. And now, you know, they single. They still in that transitionary, uh, transitionary period. From three to six months, they still deciding if they really broken up or not. Right. So it's like, yo, that's still like that's still on call dick, just like okay, that's still on call pussy, if need be. So it's like, yo, you really not broken up. Like unless it was just like a a very toxic, horrible relationship to where like, yo, you can't even go back. Outside of that, like you said, normally if y'all in the same kind of realm with one another and y'all still kinda of know the same people and stuff like that, you're still around one another. Like you say, you still friends with y'all with your ex, but it's like and, you know, just to just be honest, like back at that time when y'all did, like, let me, like, for real, was, was she on call pussy and was you on call dick at that time for like them three to six months? Not in that situation. Not in that situation. But I have been in situations where I may not have, you know, initiated the breakup or whatever, but it's been a situation where, like, you still have like those ties to each other where it's like, man, when you got a Jones in your bones or, you know, she got some, some, has some juice and want to get loose, she hit you. Yeah. And so, well, yeah, not in that particular situation, but yeah, definitely have been in a situation outside of that, um, you know, where you still have those connections to each other, where, whether it's like you mentioned, like you have uh, a mutual group of friends that you guys are going to, you know, gonna have to be around in, in some form or fashion, or if it's just like, man, like, I don't like this motherfucker, you know, as a person, but that pussy good as hell, or vice versa. Like, I don't like that nigga for shit, but that nigga used to dig me down. I'm gonna call this nigga for this 30, 40 minutes or whatever y'all, you know, see fit. But, uh, you know, I definitely, I, I, I agree, man. Like, sometimes, you know, some situations are, are different depending upon uh, the, the individuals, man. But, you know, it's definitely times when people like they may. I think it's still a breakup, but I know I know why you're saying that. But I, I, I think it's still a breakup because, you know, emotionally you break up, but f- physically you still have a connection. Well, we, and we know, too, like in most cases, breakups for like it's 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 different times breakups happen. For men and women, like if a woman had broke up, she like they said she didn't broke up with you three months ago. She already been done. 
You, however, probably just three weeks into thinking, like, man, I really, like, man, I'm kind of done with this. Like, I ain't even really caring no more now. But that's, like, three weeks into it, and she's been in it for three months. So it's just, like, is, is, is there any way where a person, like, where a person can really, like, let's say, for instance, they're not calm, cool, and collective when the breakup comes. But let's say it's not a mutual breakup. Mm. How do you resolve that without the bridge burning and without the initial hand holding of letting you go? Like, let's say, for instance, it's like, yo, I want to break up with this person, but I know they're not going to take it well. But also, too, I don't want to have to be their consolement for the next three to six months while they start to move their way on. So it's like, how do you end that? Like, how do you end that without them, you know, trying to stick uh, some cloth in your gas tank and trying to light that shit on fire? And do you mean that figuratively about the gas tank lighting? No. <laughs> like, because you got a nigga like that, you need to, or a woman like that, you need to call the fucking authorities. Listen, Lou, I've I've led several lives before I moved here, and um, I'm not gonna lie, I, I was very, very, very. Attracted to ratchet women, the more ratchet the better. But right. am I? But but the, but to be fair, um, this particular woman, um, we had found out later that she was actually bipolar, and so that I was unaware of that, and so was she at the time. So that is another thing that lies in there as well, and so oh, uh, then then eventually she did uh, wind up apologizing about that, and like I told her, you like you know you don't really have to like. I wasn't the greatest guy at that time as well. And it's like, yo, like, you didn't know what you were battling and stuff like that. So it was just like, it was cool. But it didn't end well, though. That's the thing. It didn't take, it took like a few years before we could be able to say that to each other. So, real quick, and then I'm going to answer your question that you've been trying to ask me for since we got on this motherfucker. How did that, she, how did, how did the apology go for her trying to blow your car? Like, I'm sorry, I tried to. Once I found out she was bipolar, that was kind of the apology for me. Uh, yeah. One, because how she said it, it was a very sincere way she told me. It wasn't in a way of I'm using that as an excuse and stuff like that. Like she, it was more of like when she, like how she got on the phone, how her tone was. It was more of a like yo, like it, I am still wrapping my head around the fact that yo, like I do have this, and sometimes like even on the treatments that's being, it still can hit me. Like, she was like, some days, you know, like, I'll be okay. And then another day, like, I just want to be curled up in a ball somewhere in a corner and stuff like that. So she was like, so okay. like to hear, like, so, yeah, so to hear that tone, you can hear the sincerity in it and stuff like that. So she was just like, I'm sorry. And she had really forgot about the car thing and stuff like that. And it wasn't until I was just like, yeah, man, I was like, I, I wasn't too sure of like what made it lead to like you wanting to blow my car, but she's like, "Oh my god, I can't! I couldn't even. Remember. I forgot that I did that. I completely forgot that I tried that I tried to do that." I was like, "Yeah, yeah, you did. You did that." Man, I'm so glad that the, I'm so glad that the good Lord has blessed me not to be in a situation like that. But I, I think one thing that I thought of. Just to go back to to your question, man, there's not always going to be a way to break up with somebody and still be cool with them. I think for somebody like myself, I always want to be cool, you know, and cool meaning like I don't mean like I want to talk to you every day, but like cool meaning like if I see you somewhere, we can at least say, you know, hey, what's up? How you doing? You know, we can be cordial and not like you know, on some, we acting like each other don't even exist or like we don't even see each other in the room or something like that. Yeah. But like, it's gonna be times when you're not, is due to whatever the situation is, you know, people can be really hurt, you know what I'm saying? And like you said, they, you know, there's still that imbalance of, of feelings, but somebody could be hurt beyond the point or upset beyond the point of, you know, being on some, oh no, it's, it's cool, we still good. It might be, for a while, weeks, months, years, like, no, nigga, fuck you, or no, like, fuck you, girl. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It just depends on the situation. So it's not always going to be, I don't think there's a, a sure fit way where you can be like, all right, this is how you can break up with somebody and still, you know, be cool. I know 
at the top of the show, you was like, one thing you was trying to stay away from is as far as how to break up with somebody is honesty, but I'm gonna be the bad guy, I'm gonna I'm bring it up. A lot of people are afraid to be honest mm. and that's what gets a lot of people in, in trouble in the first place when trying to uh, separate from somebody. Yeah. I think with the honest, some, so like not all women in my experience, you know, some being directly my experience and some being, and when I say experience, I mean some being with like close homies that I've seen go through. I've seen uh, uh, plenty of women where it's like, if you're honest with them, their initial response, they could be pissed. But after that uh, week or so where they've been pissed off for a month or however, they'll they'll bounce back, you know what I'm saying? And be like, hey, mm, I really wasn't feeling what you said or what you did, but I appreciate you being honest. And like, that'll put you in a better position yeah. to get you in, you know, that area of still being cool as opposed to lying in the beginning. And then they found out later that you lied or you wasn't being up front. Then, they'll, then that'll put you in a position where it's like, nah, you don't even exist to me no more. And so I just feel like, man, even though I know we're trying to stay away from it, I feel like honesty is one thing that helps. And then, you know, another piece, like you can't always worry about uh, you can't always put that person before that person's feelings before your feelings. Like if you're in a situation where it's like, yo, I got to get the fuck out of this situation. Like, yeah, you just got to cut the, you got to cut the cord, you know, as opposed to, you know, trying to pussyfoot around it and babysit it. Like, yo, you just got to cut that cord and let, you know, whatever needs to be known, be known. And, you know, just give yourself that area to be able to to be able to exhale, no matter how hard it is, you know? Yeah. But now even like you said, like that exhale and it's just like do you so I guess I guess too, and just like I, w- I would even suggest of being able to do like you said, what is for you. So like you said, that breakup is how do you want to perceive and letting it go? Because like how you just said, like if I'm supposed to be releasing this up, how do I need to release it? And I don't know if like all of us really think like that at the time during the breakup, but it's just like, yo, I know I'm upset, but like is really cussing this person out, getting disrespectful and just really trying to hurt this person. Like, is that really the way I want to go out about this? Nah, you shouldn't cuss nobody out. But you, you know. think about it, like, you don't like how you feel. You're not, you haven't really let that resonate how you feel. So you don't know how that's going to come out. Because some people, you know, like, again, get, like, very over-emotional about, not, let me not say over-emotional because that sounds bad, but, like, start to develop so much emotion and they can't really know how to interpret it in the ways they really want to. Oh, you're talking about the person that's receiving the message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about, oh, like, specifically the person receiving the message. And it's yeah, like, but I mean, but- you can't control that. You know what I'm saying? I, so, but I go like this. I say this too. I think, I think for me personally, I, you can say whatever you want to me, but it's just a matter of how you say it. It's all about the delivery, all right? So if you as a person, if person A wants to break up with person B, you know, I feel like obviously, you know, like you mentioned earlier, you have probably been running this through your mind over and over again, you know, over the course of the past several weeks or months on like, yo, I, I, I think the this relationship has come, has run its course. And one thing is you got to be mindful when you sit that person down or call that person up on the phone, like how exactly, you know, you're sending that message or uh, uh, communicating that message of, you know, wanting to end a relationship. Now, if you go about it in a way where you, you know, said it in a way as not polite, that's not the word I'm working, looking for, but in a way that has been as, as calm, as cool, collective um, as you can, and also been able to receive, you know, what that, that energy that that person is giving you, like, I can, you can't control how that person is going to react. You know, like, 
some people, uh, no matter how cool about it you are, or how professional about it you are, at least in my opinion, like you, if somebody's gonna be a hot head about it, they're right. gonna be a hot head about it. Right. You know, they might be a hot head in that moment and they might come back later on and be like, hey, look, you know, sorry about how I reacted. You yeah. know, I, I was really tripping. But in that initial moment, to your point where you're telling somebody like, hey, I wanna end this, and that person isn't ready for it to end, you know, I you can't control how they're gonna react. I don't I don't know if there's a way to be like, you know, if there's if there's a uh a for sure way that somebody isn't gonna be able to uh react in that manner. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause if you got somebody that's like ready to blow your car up, and I'm not saying that because you know yeah. what but, you know, what, that is the the example of yeah, I, this episode, yeah. Like that's that's way deeper than how you communicate it to them. Like that's that's some shit that you definitely can't control. You know, right. if you got somebody that's ready to go, you know, to that extent of being, you know, uh anger. behaviorism or you know, or anger, you know what I'm saying? So that's that's some shit you just can't control no matter what. But that's why I say like you got to put your feelings before theirs. You got to do what you got to do just so you can be able to cut that tie and just be able to have your peace of mind. Because, you know, I bet there's people out there that have been in those types of situations and like they probably just staying in it because staying in the relationship because they don't want to piss off. They they mate and they're afraid of what that reaction to be. And, you know, in some cases it's easier than others, easier said than done. But you know, you man, you got to do for you in those types of situations because the longer you stay in it, the longer you're going to drag yourself down, at right. least in my opinion. Nah, man, I, I completely agree. So that's what, you know, we try to see both sides of the equation and, you know, like always want to uh, ensure folks that like, you know, this may seem like a simple question, but, you know, for somebody, this may have been really helpful to them when it comes to learning about this stuff. So, you know, we'll be taking it back to basics when we be here on the hills to Jesus Hour. Now, I do want to move forward into our next one, which is, of course, our Shoot Your Shot. All right? Now, Shoot Your Shot does not mean anyone in this audience need to shoot their shot at us. Okay? At least <laughs> here. That's not what right. I meant. Okay? This right. is to help if you are trying to shoot your shot. Okay? Now, this is just from a couple of men. One in the cute realm, one in the handsome realm. You know what I'm saying? Bad bad and bougie. Well, bad and bougie over here. Uh, Ruby Tuesdays over here. I said we. Okay. I heard what you said. I heard what you said. But the audience, the people's got to decide that. They got to be like, oh, he is. He's so handsome. Have y'all seen Willie? He's so handsome. Even if the even if the even if the women didn't say that we was handsome, we should still say that we bad and bougie. I women, I'm not bad and bougie yet. When I got a car that make a light emblem on the street, then I'm bad and bougie. You know, man, you can buy those. You can buy those, but I ain't bought that. That's your choice. I know, cause I'm not bad and bougie yet. That ain't got nothing to do with that. That's why. <laughs> You got nothing to do with bad and bougie. You got good credit, so you can call no, yourself. No, I definitely ain't bad and bougie. <laughs> yeah. I'm building that. I'm building that back up thanks to student loans. But but this is just advice from two men, as we said. Two men. Two men who, and that is what we consider ourselves, and that's a damn sure, no matter the category what I am saying, that is one thing that we can definitely rely on, that we are two men that will always be honest and so our first ep- uh, episode for shoot your shot is going to be the question of shooting your shot to get in the box mm. now fair warning before we start this conversation as we always say here honesty is major key honesty is the best policy so in terms number one of knowing to shoot your shot, not of course being completely honest with yourself, with yourself, yeah. and this is very particular to the fellas. You have got to be honest with yourself and the person in whom which shot you are about to take. Yeah, you are just trying 
to drop some rope. You need to completely be honest about that. Okay? You don't need to be trying to do no bullshit or being like, well, let me act like a boyfriend because I think that's what that woman wants. Fuck all that. Yeah. You tricking. That's when you tricking. That's how you get your water cut off. Yeah. You don't want to get your water cut off. Mm-hmm. And you for sh- damn sure don't want to be a trick. You don't want that. No. No. Fuck your no. yeah. So that's the first thing. Being completely honest with yourself. Letting yourself know like, yo, I am really just trying to get in them draws. That's it. Thousand percent. Yeah, I think I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Be honest with yourself. And then shit, once you're honest with yourself, that's going to allow for you to be honest with her oh my god you can be honest with her about what your intentions are because you know women one thing they're gonna ask is what so what are your intentions your intentions with you me you can be yeah you can you can um my bad you can be honest with her about what your intentions are and that way that just clears a whole lot of roadblocks that come down the road you oh know yeah what I'm and then fellas but be honest with you it is like going to the casino. You got to know how to play the game, which means you got to know with the roll of the dice, you're going to win some and you're going to definitely lose some. And most of the time, you lose more than you win. But the wins can be very significant if you are patient and honest. Because you never know where that woman is in her life when you are about to shoot your shot. Because you thinking that every woman wants that whole, oh, I want to be in a relationship type thing. I want to be booed up. She might be wanting to get beast fucked. That's it. Yeah. She might be like, nigga, I don't even think you look good, but you look like you got a big old dick, so bring it on. Women talk like that, mm-hmm. nigga. She, wanna, she, wanna, she wants to be the one where you get embarrassed when you find out that she done told somebody that you beast fucking. Be like he'd right. be like vampire Brooklyn. That's one of my favorites. You beast fucked her. You did. You fucked her, Nikki. You beast fucked her. You beast <laughs> fucked her. You did it. You did. You did it. You beast fucked her. You know you did. Come on, you did it. Love, Justice. You beast fucked her. I love that move. Oh yeah. man, uh, that was one of my favorites. It's, it's a good amount of women out here. It's like, uh, okay, yeah, it's cool. I don't need a relationship. Yeah, but you won't know that if you're not honest. Exactly. So if you're not honest, then how can you find out? And then you could be having the best time of your life instead of missing out. But that's one of the things we would say when it comes to shooting your shot. But so now we want to get into a few tips that we might give. Um, And so we would definitely like to know, too, uh, because we do have a a live audience, what you think and what shots you may, uh, uh, tips you may want to give when it comes to shooting your shot. To get in the box. Um, and ladies, this is for you too. You might want to tell another lady how to get in another lady's box. Right, yeah. This is open to everybody. Absolutely. Man, I wish I could see the comments. If you go on Twitch, you can check it out. Just go on your phone, go to Twitch slash Will Ferro, and then you can see it. I ain't want to do it at first because uh, I ain't want the audio. You can just mute it. Yeah, that's what I was going to do. Yeah. But yeah, so. Um, Tip number one, um, fellas, let them initiate the nasty. All right. There ain't nothing worse. And you see this as a meme lately. <laughs> right, Tyler? Tyler wrote, you can't just go over the wheel so you can read them. Our, our Tyler? No, nah, not nah, Tyler. Oh, Thailand 23 wrote. He said what? They wrote, you can't just go over the wheels and read them. Nah, because I ain't getting the fuck up. <laughs> there you go. And <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but yeah, let them initiate the freakiness. All right, because there ain't nothing worse than a woman thinking like, yo, we just having a dope conversation. And then you just be like, yeah, but do is your pussy lips fat or are they skinny? Like <laughs> that only works with scallywags. 
Even Scallywags look at you like, okay, nigga, so this is what we doing. All right. So now let me go. But then they go into Scallywag mode. That's when they go look at your profile and see what you really about. Be like, okay, let me see if I'm going to tolerate this or not before I respond. It's like, yo, patience. Patience. Because, fellas, let's be honest. And, and, And Lou, let me know. We talk a good game of like wanting to see like like women be more free and sexual and stuff like that. But if we just being honest, don't no man don't want like a little chase and a little resistance. Like just a little bit. Just a little bit. Like if you fresh with the in the DM and you already showing the pussy, it's like first of all, thank you. This this looks wonderful, but then I just kind of hey, that you that person. That that's just that's just gonna turn me off. Yeah, it do it is a turn off. And I like ladies, in case you didn't know, like it's a turn off as into if this is just fucking cool, but it's kind it's still kind of just like ah, ugh. yeah, that yeah, it's gonna it's gonna turn me off, man. Like like you said, man. Uh, that shit sounds good, but like, you see that shit and you like, oh man. Well, for me, I'm like, oh, she doing this shit for everybody. That's how I'm looking at it. It's just like, okay, yeah. um, this was not taken for me. Yeah, because <laughs> it was. You you got this stored and you use this often. No judgment, not at all. No judgment at all. But just yeah. for myself, it's just like, ah, I like uniqueness. You know what I'm saying? I like a unique connection so if that ain't it it's just like ah if i feel like if i feel like three other dudes in a room can be like oh hey yeah i know this picture (laughs) if they can be like oh yeah i know who this is and it's just a picture of your vagina yes yeah yeah yeah. they know who you are based off your uh off your clip yeah and off your pussy lips yeah, I'm, you've, been, I'm, you've been doing you've been doing entirely too fucking much. Yeah, I don't know I don't know where where you expect this to go after that, but it's like you keep sending it. I ain't gonna not take it. <laughs> like that's just not not gonna happen. But it just be like it is a turn off. It's just like ah, uh, huh? I guess. I guess. Yeah, it's like I'm I'm cool. Oh, uh, Lou, a tip you have. For sliding in the box, when we said, you know, let her, let her initiate the freakiness. Well, first of all, you gotta be confident. I think, aside from what, I think you gotta be confident because if, if women are attracted to confidence, and if you're confident about what you want, so if you're confident about like, hey, yo, look, that's what I want. I want to get in that box. And I'm trying to smash, and as our brother, Mr. Clint Coley says, trying to take it to pound town. I think you got to be confident, man, because if you're not confident about what you're trying to, you know, about the whole situation, she's going to sniff that shit out and she's going to toss you to the fucking side. So that's that's how I feel. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. The only time, I will say this, the only time you can kind of like not like give off a lot of confidence is when there's a time of trying to be vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's completely outside of like the shooting your shot for the box. This is that's that's a completely different time. I just want people to know, confident confidence is key. But there are certain times where confidence is needed, and where sometimes your know, confidence can take a backseat. Um, another tip that I would say, um, if you slide if you slide in there. Know your limits, Master Wayne. <laughs> know your limits. If you sliding in the DM for the box, and here's the thing. A lot of motherfuckers be sliding these things and thinking they not going to respond. So they be hitting people up that don't live in the same spot as them. And then get a response. Know your limits, Master Wayne. We, All right? We, if you can't afford to fly out, don't get mad if you don't get the buyout. 
Mm. All right. You got to know your limits, Master Way. Please know your limits. So if you know you can't afford to fly out, and, and please remember, the fly out ain't just a ticket. Tell them. The fly out ain't just a ticket. That's, the, first of all, the ticket itself. Know your limits. A tip inside of that one, never make a woman go below her standards in which she flies. Now, if you know you got a woman that flies spirit, cool. And, and go that extra mile and get the big big chair. Get the big seat for her. Let her sit in the front. Man, if, if I meet a woman and she tell me she flies spirit, I can't do it. I can't do it. Hey, man, listen. I can't do it. In a pinch of the clutch, y'all can say what y'all want, man. Give me, a, give me a difference between them and the rest of these shits besides you paying for stuff. But that's not bad. That's not bad. We're going to get into that later. But. I'm too old to be fucking with somebody that fly spirit. Look, if you like spirit, spirit, here's the thing. Spirit is to be flown no more than three hours. Like if you go from Los, Los Angeles to Houston, you can fly spirit. There's no use paying the extra because you're going to sleep it all the way through. Mm -hmm. it's, but you get the big seat. You don't sit nothing less than big seat on spirit. Anything less than big seat on spirit, now I'm back to the category you just said. What the fuck is a big seat? It's like a first class seat. It's like a spirit does not have first class. No, they have two, they have four first class seats at the top. You get the big seats. They recline back and everything. That sounds dumb as hell. <laughs> not really. I, bro, I'm, t I'm telling y'all. Like, I'm talking about the naming convention. Like, the naming convention just sounds dumb as hell. Oh, the big seat? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to pay oh, the, big the, seat? the extra for the big seat? Like, yeah, give me that big seat. That's not me. Knock the fuck out, bro. Going to Houston, take a three-hour nap, and I'm there for 86 bucks. I ain't got to pay $500 to just sit. Man, hell no. But we'll get into that later. I wouldn't, I wouldn't fly Spirit from LAX to Burbank. Go well, again, cause you bad and bougie. That's that. So you know, I understand. Nah, like nah. I said, I'm Ruby Tuesdays. <laughs> so nah, I'm I out here. here one time, and I was like, "What the fuck is this?" Man, I went straight to sleep. I wasn't even. But I like you know how I know they didn't care. They didn't wake me up for the instruction video. Man, yeah. I went immediately to sleep. I woke up. I was in Houston. I was like, "Bet." You know, you know what I spent that four hundred and eighty-six dollars on. Yeah. Weed. Nigga, they charge you for wearing shoelaces. I'm not fucking. They don't charge you for nothing. Because again, first of all, I don't I don't take nothing more than ain't gonna be a carry-on. Like I don't gotta go put in luggage and stuff. They charge you for your backpack. No, they do not. They don't do that no more? No. They used to. Nah, bro, because all you gotta do is put your backpack in your suit thing and walk in. They don't tell me shit. Man, them niggas charge me for a backpack, nigga. Because they hear you talking shit about them, so they gonna charge you extra. No. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't talk shit about them till the niggas charged me for having a backpack. Man, they, they could feel it in the spirit. The spirit behooved them. The niggas. That they knew you was gonna not be a spirit flyer. Them niggas served me my beverage yeah. in a fucking red plastic solo cup. Hey, and you loved it. You thought it was liquor in there. No. Oh, it nigga. was just flat. It was just water. <laughs> but it was a styrofoam cup, Nate. But I say all of that to say you cannot do not lower the standards of which a, a woman flies. So like if she flies business class, you need to fly her out business class. If she flies first class normally, you need to fly her first class. If a woman flies business class and first class, she need to use some of her points that she's accumulated on that airline that she flies. Now here's the thing, if she, now, now y'all like, now in the comments y'all can correct me if I'm wrong, if she fuck with you, she will. Like if she fuck with you, she, she'll use some of her points if she really wants to come and see you. That's something I do know. Like if they really want to come and see you, it's like, yo, I can use my points to get there, but it's like, yo, I can use some help back. It's like, all right, yo, I got that. Yeah, you, yeah, because, Excuse me. Yeah, I just yeah use some of them Delta frequent flyer miles. I'm worth it. But again, too, know your limits, Master Wayne. 
if you know you can't afford that first class ticket and you messing with a chick that fly first class and again her paying with the points is optional she ain't got to do that nah you right nah nah you right if you fuck with a girl that fly first class and you can't afford it you need to stay up out of her business you need to go to your local gas station you, 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 go, you go in there and and shoot your shot at the woman that sell you your swisher sweets there you go she's that's a what lovely you. woman she tells that's you have a good day and everything yeah she been mean, waiting on you right you need waiting she, on you to say something she can hop in her nissan ultima after she get off and she can drive on over to you don't you be over there trying to fuck around with no women that fly business class and first class and you can't afford to put them in a regular class for and, the flight. And not only that, like we said, it ain't just the flight. You got to worry about the stay because she can choose to stay with you and she can choose to not stay with you. Either way, you still need the resources and funding for a hotel for the days that she going to be there. No matter what. That's really just on however y'all decide to work that out. Also, whatever expenses come with her being there that day. So that means there's three meals you got to pay for. Drinks. Snacks. Hella snacks. Hell, that's, that's a tip in itself. Snacks, nigga. Snacks. Hell, you want to get in the box, just in the DM of your pantry. Be like, yo, what up? You want to come invade this, watch a movie and take a nap? You be, watch, watch how many women say, yo, where you at? She, she don't want you to take her somewhere in the city, especially if you live in a city like a New York, New York or LA or Atlanta or Houston. She don't want to see. Yep. Oh, and if she and smokes? Who's going to be paying for that? And yo, don't let her ass. smoke. Yeah, you got to take her. You got to take her to the dispensary. So again. Yo, and, and you need to pay for that. So again, if you don't have that. Don't do it. Don't do it. Know your Don't limits, Master Wayne. Don't do it. But hey, Don't. if you can if you can muster it with, with a woman that's more into your bracket, and, and, and hey, here's the thing. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Don't hey, for anybody that may for some reason be feeling like it's some shaming or nothing like that. Hey man, ain't nothing wrong with knowing where you at. Yeah. Date your wage, as date, they say. Yep, date your wage. I'm Joe, telling you. And wage. They got some badass looking uh, chicks that work at Applebee's. I was gonna say Chili's, but then I'd be lying. Uh, but at Applebee's, they got some some nice nice looking women in there. Where? Which Applebee's? Shit, Man, I you gotta go down south. You gotta go down south. You can't not not over here. All of them look like meth heads out here. But in in, in like Houston, bro, Applebee's be having them old thickums. You know what I'm I saying? Mean, them that, yeah, that, I mean, dog, nah, that's Houston, man. Houston, you can. Go under the bridge and find a bad bitch under the bridge in Houston. Hey, hey, hey bro, that's that's a come up is what, if you look at me. <laughs> she Stop. got all her teeth is over. I'm like, man, come on. Let me show you. <laughs> Let me show you the world real quick. <laughs> oh, man. You got you got another tip, uh, phone? Uh what we we said, date your wage. Uh have some shit planned out when they get there. Yo. Have some shit planned out. Just don't be like, when she get there, she gonna wanna know an itinerary of don't. what y'all got planned during her stay. Once you have her in the city. So think ahead. It ain't even gotta be no expensive shit. But just at least have one activity a day. At least just one. Yes. To be able to take her around and show her something. And it could be some free shit. You can take her to the botanical gardens if you want to. Yep. Um, some shit like that. But exactly. Yeah. No, no, exactly. Like, yeah. I think that is one of the biggest things. Like, yo, women hate when you go, well, what you want to do? You brought me out here. What do you mean? What do I want to do? Yeah, I was, I'm I'm sticking that for you. What yeah. are we going to So it's like one one thing, too, when they first get here, bro, have, the, have a place ready for them to go take a nap and get comfortable. They're not trying to go nowhere immediately. Had them somewhere where they can go wash their face. They can go shower off the airport. If they smoke, have a blunt. If they smoke, have a blunt wrapped and ready when they get in the car. 
really before well for me even before if you before you take them to the hotel or wherever they'll be staying get them some food yep yeah. that's what they want and options hey fellas options if you don't know what she like to eat but you got like a ballpark what she want to do get options whole bunch of things just get that have that ready let her go shower, eat, because then she's going to be way more pleasant. Like I said, if she got weed, you had that stuff rolled and ready in the car. Yes. And I'm telling you, have her letting her smoke, drive. You driving, she smoking, she can relax. I'm telling you. And like he said, and t- just have things, have an itinerary, have something to do, and have fun. That's the thing, man. Like, yo, can can, can we please get back to where... Getting some ass was fun. Niggas, spend some shit. It ain't it ain't tricking. Especially if you done made your intentions clear. Right. Like how the fuck you gonna be cheap trying to get ass? Like the last time I checked, I'm like, yo, I wanna have fun while I'm on here. Like I like the last time I checked, I wanna have a good time too. This ain't just about you. Big old facts. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm about to take you to Sky Zone. You know what I'm saying? Something. It's gonna walk this balance beam and fall into this uh, pile of cushy things. Like, man, I'm gonna have me a good old time. <laughs> just don't have her out here feeling like a floozy. Right. Like, make it fun. But it's just like, yo, like, that's the thing, too. It's just like, a lot of folks, I'm just like, I can't contemplate. Why would you fly somebody out like you don't have fun with? Facts. That I'd like, yo, y'all, you really came out just to beast fuck? That's it. What about what about the next twenty three hours? Exactly, because yeah, because if you if you can't have fun with each other, your next twenty three hours is going to be shit. You mean to tell you mean to tell me you paid over a thousand dollars for her to be like this all weekend? And That's then it. for that one hour throughout that th- that day, y'all fucking. Shit. And you and you're right, uh Abu uh, uh Abu Malik from the crowd. Having fun like that ain't tricking though. And it's not. And so that's no. I feel like that's the misconception a lot of like men and stuff like that have. It's like, yo, bro, like I'm telling you, don't do things outside of your means. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, if you know you can't afford Mastros like that, don't do it. Don't cause Mastros is stack up just whew, yeah. Sure. Uh, boy. But if you got Mastro's money or you didn't plan for Mastro's, then you good. But or it's just like a situation where, you know what I'm saying, she you feel like y'all need to go to Mastro's, go. Yeah. Everybody don't need to go to you don't need to take everybody to Mastro's. Everybody need to go to Mastro's. Mm-mm. Uh no, everybody need to try the butter cake. Yeah, some nah. motherfuckers need to go to Sizzler. Mm, some of you need to go to Sizzler. And just the buffet. Yeah. So I'm gonna get I'ma get the meal, you get the buffet. Some of you motherfuckers need to go to Shake Shack. Or steak and shake, you know what I'm saying? But some of you niggas need to go to Golden Corral. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, it's like yo, have fun, man. Hanging out with women and going like make moments with women is so much fun. Like it's a it's a great time when you can have a great time. Like you know, like it ain't always got to be just like have a plan. Just have a plan, please, fellas. Like that's that was I think one of our last tips that we would like to give for that is just have a plan if you gonna bring out. That ain't even just trying to get the box. I think that's just in general. Women love niggas with plans. Yes, so it ain't got and, and like he said, bro. It ain't gotta be over the top stuff it's just like yo just put a little into it like hear her out and then get and then do something that you didn't heard that you know she liked that you can incorporate into the stuff man like even if you even if it don't work out you know what i'm saying you can at least say like man i did have fun putting that shit together and i did like the smile on her face she had when she did see it they go the nightmare not went like how i would have planned i had wanted it to go but Yo, hey man, that shit dope, and I'm, I I know what to do for the next one though. Big old yeah. facts. And you know, keep doing our thing. 
Uh, but like we said, we want to thank everybody for tuning in to the Heels to Jesus Hour. Please make sure you like and subscribe to the WP Media channel. That's YouTube.com slash Will Ferrell. And let me know in the comments below, what is the craziest breakup you have heard of? I want to know in the comments below, what is the craziest breakup you have ever heard? Let us know in the comments below, and we will catch you next time. Yes, sir.